The following is a production of the Dallas Genealogical Society. For more information, please visit our website at dallasgenealogy.org. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome. We're recording the meeting. I know that. I'm Tony Hansen, president of the Dallas Genealogical Society, coming to you live from the J.R. Johnson uh, Public Library in downtown Dallas. And I welcome those of you that have joined us here in person and those of you who have joined us on Zoom. We have lots of information to cover today, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. We are recording. That's good. The um, minutes from the previous meeting were posted on the website. You should have received some email about those as well. And you can always go to the website and look at events, uh, next general meeting, and then meeting minutes. And you can see not only this meeting, but our previous meetings. Does anybody have any additions or corrections to the meeting, the minutes as posted? Hearing and seeing none, we'll accept those. Terry, thank you very much. Uh, this is our financial summary from Susan Manwater, our treasurer. Uh, we're still in pretty good shape, although not in as good a shape as we were a few days ago. We just realized, and looking back through some of our portals to Texas history stuff, that we had overlooked an invoice from uh, newsletter stuff. And so we, of course, want to pay that. So we have the check is in the mail. promise you that. Uh, that did necessitate us going back and modifying the budget a little bit. So we had previously passed a budget. And at the board meeting last Wednesday night, we increased it a bit by about $2,400 to take into account the, um, the money that we're going to have to pay for the digitization that's already occurred. Um, we also have a couple of additional information technology-related expenses that have gone up. And so for that reason, we did increase the, the expense budget a little bit probably means we're going to be in a little bit of deficit this year, but we've got the reserve, so we're in good shape for that. I've talked before about a cemetery indexing project. This is an attempt to add find a grave and billion grave records to our 41,742 record database, and we're moving right along. So far, we've got just about 3,000 records that have been indexed. We're about 7% of the way done. And we've had some very busy people, I might add. So Heather Hall, wherever you are, thank you very much for all that you have done. But Megan Dobbins, Pat Hernandez, Susan Younger, and Donald Henson have all contributed, as others too. But these are the, the top five people for the last 30 days. So we're getting there. This project might actually get done. So again, thank you. Uh, I invite all of you to participate. We've got complete instructions on the website. Again, if you just go to our Get Involved, and then the 2024, which is the year we hope to finish it, Cemetery uh, Indexing Project, there are several videos that I just ask you to watch. It kind of explains what we're doing and how to do it, and we'll get you set up, and you can see your name up in lights at the next meeting, hopefully. We did participate in the 44th Annual Texas Hispanic Genealogical and Historical Conference. That was a two-day event, uh, October 4th and 5th, and uh, very grateful to... Uh, Kim Edge and to Sharon Bowles, who were there at the conference, at the table both days for us, set up right very next over to the Dallas Public Library. So we had a good chance to talk to Stephanie and some of the good folks there as well. A lot of good conversation, lots of good contacts. So again, Kim and Sharon, thank you. And they were back again for the Family History Day here at the Dallas Public Library. That was on Friday, October 18th. Lots of participation. Apparently, feedback and the participation from the library was really good. They had, I think, one of the most highly rated participations for one of the sessions that was broadcast. So lots of people here, lots of people virtually. And again, we had Kim and Sharon mainly helping us at the table and answering lots of really good questions from the people that were participating at the event. So thank you again, ladies. Appreciate it. And we'd love to have other people kind of step forward and maybe help uh, Kim and Sharon out with somebody. So if you're at all interested in representing the society of things like this, but sure love to know about it, and we'll get you involved and get you invited. We do have some business that we need to take care of today. Uh, we've talked several times about some proposed bylaw changes that the board has recommended, and if approved today, these are going to go into effect immediately. Uh, the first change is just basically lower the bar a little bit for the office of president. We're no longer requiring that the president have prior board experience. We've also made a change where just add adding some additional verbiage that basically spells out that when you're elected, you're in office until somebody replaces you or until you resign, just to make, clarify that changeover at the end of the year. And then we're also eliminating the position of director of publication content. And I've explained why at a couple meetings, so I'm not going to go back over that again, unless there are any questions from anybody. Um, do you need a quick quorum check? Can I see a show of hands of everybody that are members here? And... If I can just hear, do we have at least four more people on the Zoom call that are members of the DGS? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. 
All right, then I just need a motion from somebody to approve the changes to the bylaws as as proposed. Okay, and, and Gene Larson has moved. I need a second. Uh, I'm going to let Sue Gover be the second for that. Uh, I would just then do by a voice vote. Uh, if you're in favor of the proposed bylaw changes, please in indicate by saying aye. 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 And any opposed, say nay. So the motion has carried. Thank you very much for that. I do appreciate it. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, the Dallas Genealogical Society and the Portal to Texas History. Uh, the Portal has been our strategic digital archiving partner for 13 years now, and we're very proud of that. And we got our start back in 2011 when the board moved for the first time to fund the digitization of our journals that we had available at that time. We have then continued on. We uh, did the digitization of probate records. We had those as a series of microfilms uh, that the portal uh, digitized for us. You can, of course, go view them on Family Search if you know what you're looking for, um, because they're not indexed, so you just kind of have to step through lots and lots of pictures. Fortunately, that's not the case for the portal. Members of the DGS went through and actually added metadata information about each of the cases, so you can now just do a search on the portal or even a Google search, and you're likely going to find these cases that you're looking for. And that's just one example of the great relationship we have had with the portal. Uh, we did our quarterlies a while ago, and... Uh, did that with a $1,000 Rescuing Texas History Grant that the University of North Texas provided with us. And I want to emphasize, too, that when you work with the portal, this is much, much more than just digitizing an image. There's a lot of things that go on behind the image, so to speak, that make these uh, images and our, our documents visible to the world. So there's lots of things to do that they do that don't meet the eye but meet the internet, so to speak. And it exposes anything that is up there, our stuff and any other partner as well, uh, to visibility around the world. It's, it's a wonderful relationship and a wonderful platform. Uh, in fact, that was the focus of our 2016 um, North Texas Giving Day activity. We raised funding to contribute to a, a fund that has been established, the Kathy Hartman um, Fund, to have an ongoing base of financial support for the portal to continue its operation and get it around some of the, the variances that the state legislature throws their way now and then. And we were very proud and, and pleased to be able to support that. Uh, we digitized our quarterlies again through a North Texas Giving Day effort. And as part of our commitment, we had a little bit of money left over at the end that we didn't spend. So we donated the, the balance again to the, the Kathy and Elsie Hartman Portal to Texas History Endowment Fund uh, as, as what we try to do whenever we have funds like this. The newsletters were the point of contention. We somehow missed the payment on that, but that has since been made. Uh, and in reviewing all that, we realized that, again, we had a bit of an overrun, and so we have a little bit of excess funds left over, which the board has just rounded up to $200. So this isn't the reason I asked Joanna Belden to come here, but I'm glad she's here. So, Joanna, if you'd come on up here for just a minute, I'd like to present you with the, with the check and give you an opportunity to say some things about the portal and uh, things that we would like to know. There's a check for you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. pleasure. Thank you. I want to second Tony's words and thank you everyone for being here. And I'm really excited to be here this morning. I'm really uh, want to second what Tony said, which is um, we really value the relationship we've had with the Dallas Genealogical Society over the years. It's been a great opportunity for us and for you guys to share your content and really get your, your materials that you have and that you've worked so hard on out in the world. And um, today I am here to uh, actually award something to you guys. Um, I really I know that it's part of a team effort, all the materials that you guys have digitized with us over the years, but I know that Tony Hansen has really been one of the driving forces behind that, so I really honor him for that as well. But he was shocked when I told him this, and I'll, I'll get onto that a little bit, but basically, it's an honor of the Dallas Genealogical Society in recognition of the remarkable achievement in reaching in 2024 over a million uses of your materials on the portal to Texas history, which is really exciting. Um, so that's signed by our Dean and our associate Dean and also by me. And, um, you know, it just goes attest to the quality and the importance of the materials that you guys have put out there on the portal. People are really using them. And I looked at it this morning, it's creeping up on 1.2 million uses. So people are really loving it. So Tony, this is for you and for the society. Thank you so much for your partnership over the years. Yeah, wonderful, thank you very much. That's great. Thing. Get a few pictures of this for posterity. Yeah. 
Anything else? Yeah. Oh, one more. <laughs> well, we have a lot to smile about. Yeah. But again, thank you so much for this check. This was really unexpected. And uh, Tony, when I told him that, you know, we we're planning me coming here, he's like, pinch me. Is it really true? I'm like, it's really true. Let me send you to your stats page. So we appreciate you guys so much and the content that you've put on the portal. Thank you so much and for all your support over the years. Thank you. And just to show you how dedicated uh, she is, this is her second of three trips to Dallas this weekend. So we really appreciate that. I know what the traffic's like. I just want to share a little bit with you some, some information. Um, we're in the top 5% of views of information on the portal. So it's just pretty incredible. We're just behind the sixth floor museum at Dealey Plaza. Everybody heard of that before? Yeah. They average 1,100 visitors every day to their facility. And we're just about, well, when I checked, about 100,000 behind them. So we're in pretty good company. We're just ahead of the Texas General Land Office, the Hopkins County Genealogical Society, the Dallas Public Library, and the Collin County Genealogical Society, just some other organizations that I had kind of pulled out that were kind of comparable to us. So uh, again, I, I'm flabbergasted, but, but really pleased and really proud. The things that people are hitting, not too surprisingly, you know, newsletters are, you know, by uh, count, the things that we have the most of, quarterlies are next. So those are um, not too surprising. When you dig a little deeper, the most viewed publications are those journals that were published back in the you know, in 1900s, 1990s and 2000s. Uh, Twelve of the top 13 most viewed uh, things that we have up there are those Dallas journals. Sneaking at number seven, I can't figure this one out. There is one newsletter from March of 1998, and looking at the table of contents, I can't understand why. I don't care. It's it's up there. It's it pushes us over the top, and I love it. So again, um, great partnership. Many many of you in this room, many of you on the call, have had a, an important part in this. And so again, thank you for all you did, and we'll wait for two million. Thanks, Rihanna. Moving on to other news. Uh, Many of you were used to using a Wi-Fi hotspot up on the eighth floor. Uh, the library has withdrawn support for those, and they're no longer available. So the board voted this uh, past meeting to go ahead and purchase one. We're going to purchase a 32-user uh, router. It is going to be kept up on the eighth floor desk. It'll be available for patrons up there and also in, available for us for meetings like this. It's really going to simplify our setup down here as well. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and purchase that and to pay the the annual fee, which is $10 a month for the, the cellular coverage. And so that should be available hopefully in a matter of weeks and will be available again for everybody. So uh, we've, we've had one offer already to purchase the router for us. Terry Turner has generously offered to fund the cost of the actual router that we need to purchase. And so uh, again, thank you, Terry, for that very generous offer. And so we're going to make that happen. Uh, I just want to mention that we've got several interest groups that are still actively meeting, and you can find out all about them by going to the calendar, to the special interest groups, and then you will see a calendar of events. Meeting in November, we have the German group that's going to be meeting on the 14th here on the 6th floor. It will also be broadcast on Zoom. And Breuer, one of the co-chairs there, is going to be talking about resources for information about the Baden-Württemberg ancestors. I think my ancestors are from there. The African-American group is meeting on the 16th. That's going to be virtual only, not here at the physical at the library this month. DNA group is going to be meeting on the 21st at 6 p.m. They do meet on the sixth floor in classroom D, plus they'll be broadcasting it on Zoom. And the best practices group will be meeting on the 23rd here at the library at 1 p.m. We have some exciting seminars coming up next year. Keep your calendar clear for the, the March 15th and 16th event where we're going to have representatives from the Ulster Historical Society here in Dallas. So they're going to be making the normal seminar presentation on Saturday. They're coming back on Sunday and will be available for consultations. So you'll be registered like register with them, pay them their registration fee, and they will sit down and spend about 20 minutes with you, giving you one-on-one -on -one consultation about your Irish heritage. And so definitely you want to take advantage of that if you've got Irish background at all. Colleen Robledo Green is going to be here in July talking about tracing your Mexican ancestors. And an interesting thing popped up on X this morning, this. So this is a, a post from her. She says, so because of my earlier post about genealogy conferences and institutes syllabi and accessibility shortcomings, I have to also point out that genealogy conferences and institutes do virtual events and Dallas Genealogical Society with hybrid events way better than academic and library professional events do. Well done, us. So well done, tech team. We got a, a great call out there. So that was just a nice thing. Um, so I know. 
Well, we did sponsor one of her events. I'll, I'll point out, this is not to put down the Texas State Society, but she's doing three presentations there this weekend at their event, and we got the call out. So, And then in the fall, we got Gina Phil <coughs> Philbert Ortega coming back, discovering more about our women, our ancestors. So three great seminars coming up. We'll be back here again December 7th. John Slate, the Dallas City Archivist, is going to be here talking about genealogy resources at the Dallas Municipal Archives. And I want to note that this meeting is going to be held at the Lakewood branch of the library, not here. So this is 6121 Worth Street. That's kind of over in... Hello, Mouse, wrong side. Up there someplace. <laughs> anyway, so not here. But uh, ho hopefully you will join us there. Again, I want to thank the tech team for all the fabulous work they have done. Melissa, Kim, Paul Feather, and, and Todd Decker for this. Betty, for doing our hospitality. And, of course, the Dallas Public Library for all they do to support us. But now I'd like to call Sue up here and let her introduce our speaker. And Janice, I will quit sharing so that you can start sharing. This has been a production of the Dallas Genealogical Society. If you're already a member, thank you. Your fees have been supporting these and other society activities. If you're not yet a member, please consider joining now. Go to dallasgenealogy.org and click on the membership tab.